Caroline and Griff here for PC Games N, and we're back with another video about the awesome post-apocalyptic shooter Metro Exodus. This one is all about the mind-blowing secrets and details hiding deep within the game. Yes, we're talking things like the crazy inventive ways you can use fire, how NPCs are actually way smarter than you think they are, and more. And speaking of smart people, I've heard that only the smartest people subscribe to PC Games N, so if you haven't already, click on that subscribe button like the genius you are. Done? Okay, let's get started. The fire in Metro Exodus is severely underrated. Not only does it look pretty, but it acts like fire too, spreading and propagating naturally. Take these tumbleweeds in the Caspian stage, for example. You can throw molotovs and set them alight, and they'll even ignite other tumbleweeds if they brush against each other. But a slightly more spectacular touch is throwing your molotov at the oil fields dotted around the place. They'll actually ignite the geysers and make the whole thing go up in flames. Bonus points if you manage to bait a few enemies into the fire. Ah, oh, roasted human animal. It's my favorite meat for a post-apocalyptic Sunday lunch. For another example of how Metro's fire has a few cool properties coded into it, try playing around with your cigarette lighter. Now, primarily it's there for you to burn away cobwebs that slow you down in dark interiors, but you can actually put its flame towards another use. Try holding it up to an unlit torch and it will actually catch fire and illuminate your surroundings. Be sure to extinguish it after you've used it though, so no one can see you. What are you, an amateur? You can also use your lighter to ignite entire bonfires. Just hold it up to the wood and flames will appear. Fire, it's so hot right now. So hot right now. It's a radioactive doggy, radioactive dog world in Metro Exodus, and animals have far more than you on the menu. If you sit back and watch the game's wildlife for a while, you'll see that creatures actually go after each other. Check out the bats in the Caspian level. When you're outside of their search radius, they target other creatures, like the packs of human animals here. See how that bat thing swoops down and tries to grab them, just as it does if it spots you? I'm kind of insulted that it can't tell us apart, to be honest. It'll also hungrily follow other creatures like a circling vulture. We haven't seen them have a full-on scrap like the animals in Far Cry, but there's clearly intent there. In Metro Exodus, you travel between different open world areas on a steam train, and there are more interactive points in this locomotive than you might think. It's not just sitting down and staring out the window as you silently wrestle the person next to you for control of the armrest, you know, like on most train journeys. Here, you can do things like tune your radio to find a signal, read all the files you've got on people like it's a completely normal thing to do, and meet your buddy outside for a quick smoke. You can even take over coal shoveling duties. Two scoops? Yeah, that should be enough, because I'm lazy. But without a doubt, my favorite thing to do on board is to blast the train horn while two people are trying to have a conversation. It's important to keep spirits high in the post-apocalypse, I think. Man, I am great company. Speaking of your train, I love how it's used as a dynamic menu screen. It actually changes depending on where you are in the story. When you've reached the sunny forest of the Tega, you'll see lots of foliage outside the window, and Anna will be appropriately dressed for the weather. There's even a refreshing beverage up there. And a little later on, when the spirits are a bit lower, everything's all grim and foggy. And check the counter on the window showing how many miles you've done. But where's Anna gone? We'll keep the spoiler free, so let's just say she's, uh, somewhere else. This one's a classic Metro Easter egg. In Metro Exodus, you can occasionally find books from before the war. One of the books you can discover is called Metro 2033, which of course is the title of author Dmitry Glukovsky's first novel in the Metro series and the material on which the first game is based. There's Metro Last Light 2, the second book and game in the series. And there's even Metro 2035, the most recent of the novels. These books pop up in several places and it's all super meta because it means the books actually exist in universe, so the events of the book are coming true, making Glukovsky some kind of nuclear Nostradamus, yet no one ever brings it up. I don't know, it would probably freak me out if I discovered everything I did was being described in a series of novels, but that's just me. Since Metro Exodus is open-ended, there's no correct order for you to do things in. Because of this, NPCs have different voice lines they can use depending on how you're playing. Take this guy on the Volga stage. He's made a nice little home at the top of a crane. You come across a pack of them? Oh, just run. I once had to drop all my shit to just get away and I consider myself light. There's a point at which the game directs you there. But if you head to it straight away, then the next time you visit, Crane Guy will tell you he's seen you around the area. He's pretty laid back though, considering you're essentially just a random dude in a gas mask skulking through his house. By the way, haven't you already been here? <laughs> I came back from fishing, found my mutant neighbors dead. 
It's not just NPCs whose dialogue changes depending on context. Your enemies also say different things about what you do. And by that I mean the human enemies, not like the crows or anything. So say you're in a firefight and you crouch behind a fence, they'll actually identify that you're behind a fence and verbally relay it to their squad mates. Or if you're in a house, they'll say that your gunfire is coming from a house. I like that the developers have given them awareness of where you are at all times, a bit like a post-apocalyptic sports commentator. Now, you shouldn't be nice just so you can get rewarded for it, but Retro Exodus does pay you back for your selfless acts. For instance, in the Taker stage, you come across this man tied to a pole and being harassed by a hungry wolf. You can choose to ignore him, but if you save him, you'll see him later by the lake, and he'll gift you a few bits of ammo and crafting resources. To be honest, he's not a huge help. He seems like he's had a bit to drink, so probably isn't in the right mind to make a grand gesture. But hey, we feel good that he's able to do that with his life, and it was all down to us. Although we did kill an innocent wolf for it, so yeah, you just can't win in the wasteland, can you? What you do matters in Metro Exodus. If you run around killing people, you'll be seen as a monster. An example lies with the forest tribe of the Tager level. There's a point at which everyone surrenders and lays down their arms. Use this as an opportunity to knock them out rather than execute them, and you'll improve your reputation, which counts towards the good ending. If you opt for something more violent, you'll get the bad ending. It just goes to show you that there are multiple ways to complete an objective. Another example of this in the Taiga is if you approach tribesmen with your weapon down, you don't even have to fight them. They'll just be nice to you. Hey look, I didn't kill you. You're welcome. The graphic settings in Metro Exodus go a bit further than most games. Here, there's something above Ultra called Extreme. This is a setting so, well, extreme, that you're not even really meant to be able to run it. Not yet, anyway. Extreme modes are designed for hardware of the future. Right now, it's near photoreal environments, running at 4K resolution and beyond will probably make your computer weep and explode. Maybe. But in 5 or 10 years time when you've got a beefy next-gen graphics card, you'll finally be able to load up Metro Exodus on Extreme mode and experience the glory. This is the new, yeah, but can it run Crisis? Lastly, on the topic of benchmarking, there is actually a proper benchmarking tool in the game, but it's not easy to find. Basically, rather than being in the graphics menu like in most games, you have to dig into the files. Go in the Metro folder like so, and you'll find the benchmark executable. You can use it to find out how smoothly Metro will run on your rig. It's weird they don't tell you about it though. Maybe they just don't want to hurt my feelings with how badly my underpowered machine will perform. Yeah, that'll be it. So those were the 12 hidden secrets and details that we found in Metro Exodus. But wait, did you know you can shoot the head off this statue? There's a little bonus secret for you there. Anyway, if you found something cool lurking in this game that we missed, let us know about it in the comments. We'd love to hear about it. We would indeed. Anyway, please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more videos from PC Games N. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.